December 2024, two mysterious aircraft break cover over China. Social media explodes. Defense analysts scramble. Beijing just revealed what they claim is the future of air combat. But here's what they're not telling you. While the world watches China's J-36 and J-50 prototypes dance through the skies, the United States Air Force has been flying something far more advanced in complete secrecy since 2020, the Boeing F-47. And the gap between these machines? It's not even close. The next generation of air dominance isn't coming. It's already here, and China's playing catch-up. March 2025 changed everything. The Pentagon made an announcement that sent shockwaves through Beijing. Boeing wins the contract for America's sixth-generation fighter. The F-47 becomes reality. And suddenly, all those flashy videos from Chengdu don't look so impressive anymore. If you think sixth-generation fighters are just faster jets with better stealth, type yes in the comments, because what's actually happening will change warfare forever. Let's cut through the noise and look at the hard facts. China wants the world to believe they're ahead. Those December test flights weren't accidents. They were orchestrated carefully timed, designed to create headlines, and they worked. News outlets ran stories asking if America had fallen behind, but they missed the most important detail. The F-47 has been flying for five years. Back in September 2020, the Air Force dropped a bombshell. They'd already designed, built, and flown a full-scale prototype. Not a concept, not a mock-up. A complete aircraft breaking records in classified tests. While China was still testing wind tunnel models, American pilots were pushing the limits of sixth-generation technology in actual flight. General David Alvin confirmed it. The X-plane demonstrators have been flying hundreds of hours, testing cutting-edge concepts, proving technologies that China is only now beginning to explore. Boeing's prototype maturity is exactly why they won the contract. The design works, the technology is proven, the foundation is solid. Compare that to China's approach. The J-36 made its first public flight in December 2024. Beautiful aircraft, impressive size, three engines creating a spectacle. But here's what matters. It's still an early testing phase. That pitot tube on the nose? That's flight test equipment. The aircraft is gathering basic data. These are technology demonstrators, not production-ready fighters. The United States didn't just start earlier, they started smarter. Digital engineering revolutionized the entire program. The Air Force estimates 20% savings on both time and cost. They can iterate faster, test virtually, identify problems before metal gets cut. But here's where it gets really interesting. The F-47 isn't just a fighter, it's a quarterback. The quarterback doesn't win games alone, he coordinates the offense, makes split-second decisions directing 10 other players. The F-47 does the same thing in the sky, except its teammates are autonomous drones carrying sensors, weapons, and electronic warfare systems. The Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program is the secret weapon. These aren't remote-controlled drones needing constant human input. They're genuine artificial intelligence platforms capable of independent decision-making. They scout ahead, they jam enemy radars, they draw fire, they strike targets, all while the F-47 pilot orchestrates the battle from a survivable distance. The numbers tell the story. The Air Force plans to field 185 F-47s supported by over 1,000 autonomous drones, that's not a fighter fleet, that's a force multiplier. Each F-47 becomes the brain of a five or six aircraft formation. Suddenly, China doesn't need to match 185 fighters. They need to defeat nearly 2,000 platforms working as one integrated system. China's trying to copy this concept. The J-36 has that unusual side-by-side -side cockpit layout specifically for two crew members to manage unmanned systems. But they're years behind in the artificial intelligence and networking that makes it work. Having a loyal wingman concept is easy. Making it effective in combat against American electronic warfare, that's the hard part. And here's the kicker. The F-47 integrates into a broader network. Satellites, ground stations, Navy ships, other aircraft. Every sensor feeds information. Every platform shares data. The F-47 doesn't just see what its own radar detects, it sees everything friendly forces can observe across hundreds of miles. Let's talk about being invisible. Not movie invisible, combat invisible. Fifth generation stealth was revolutionary. The F-22 and F-35 changed warfare by being extremely difficult to detect on radar. But they have limitations. Certain radar frequencies can still pick them up. They're hard to find, not impossible. Sixth generation stealth goes further. The F-47 features next generation broadband low observability. Invisible across more frequencies, harder to detect from more angles. 
advanced materials that don't just scatter radar, but absorb it. Ceramic radar absorbent coatings that survive the intense heat of supersonic flight while remaining effective. But the real innovation? Managing the infrared signature. Jet engines produce enormous heat. That heat creates a signature that infrared sensors can track from dozens of miles away. The F-47 doesn't accept this. Advanced cooling systems, carefully designed exhaust, materials that mask thermal radiation. The aircraft becomes a ghost not just to radar, but to heat-seeking systems. China's prototypes show impressive stealth shaping. Though smooth surfaces and blended wing bodies aren't accidents, they understand stealth principles. But understanding principles and manufacturing the materials are different challenges. The United States has been perfecting these processes for 40 years. China has been playing catch-up for two decades. There's also the maintenance problem. Stealth coatings are fragile. The F-47 uses new ceramic coatings designed to survive harsh environments while staying effective. That means more sorties, less maintenance, higher operational readiness. Distance changes everything in the Pacific. Taiwan is 100 miles from mainland China. Guam is 1,500 miles further. Fighting across those distances requires range, serious range. The F-47 has a combat radius exceeding 1,000 nautical miles. That's over 1,100 regular miles. For comparison, the F-22 manages about 460 miles, the F-35 about 670. The F-47 more than doubles their reach. Why does this matter? Tanker aircraft are vulnerable. They're big, slow, defenseless. They can't operate near enemy air defenses. The F-47 can strike deep into contested airspace without them. That's game-changing flexibility. The J-36's size suggests similar range priorities. That massive airframe carries lots of fuel. Three engines consume more gas than two, but that bulk provides endurance. China designed it specifically for Pacific distances. But range isn't just about fuel tanks. It's about efficient engines. The F-47 uses adaptive cycle engines from the next generation adaptive propulsion program. They adjust their bypass ratio in flight High bypass for efficient cruising, low bypass for maximum thrust in combat. China's engine technology remains their weakest link. The engines visible on the J-36 prototype appear to be modified WS-10 variants. Reliable engines, proven engines, but not cutting-edge adaptive cycle technology. That gap translates directly to combat radius and sustained performance. Mach 2 sounds fast because it is fast. 1,500 miles per hour. At that speed, decision cycles compress. Enemy response times evaporate. The F-47 exceeds Mach 2. Exact performance remains classified, but aerospace experts suggest capabilities pushing toward Mach 3. That's repositioning across an entire theater in under an hour, striking multiple targets before defenders can react. Speed provides options, tactical flexibility, strategic surprise, an F-47 operating over the Taiwan Strait can be supporting operations near Okinawa 30 minutes later. Speed makes the aircraft unpredictable, and unpredictable is survivable. In modern air combat, both aircraft will rarely face each other directly. They'll coordinate their own formations, direct loyal wingmen, process sensor data, launch long-range missiles. Speed determines who controls engagement geometry, who decides whether to fight or evade, who strikes first, and first usually means only. The F-47 carries everything modern warfare demands. Long-range air-to-air missiles for beyond visual range combat, precision-guided bombs for ground strikes, potentially hypersonic missiles for time-critical targets. The aircraft may carry B-61 nuclear gravity bombs. That's not confirmed, but the capability makes the F-47 a true multi-role platform. The internal weapons bays remain classified, but sixth-generation design principles emphasize payload flexibility, modular racks that reconfigure for different missions, the ability to carry a mix of weapons optimized for the specific threat. China's J-36 features large internal weapons bays designed for air-to-air -air missiles and air-to-ground munitions. The capability set looks similar to American planning. But weapons' effectiveness depends on the sensors finding targets, the networks coordinating strikes, 
the electronic warfare protecting the launch aircraft. Here's what actually matters. Production and deployment. Boeing's already building the first F-47. Not studying it, not designing it, building it. Metal is being cut, components are being assembled. First flight happens in 2028. Operational capability arrives by 2029. The fighter enters fleet service in the early 2030s. That's achievable because the technology is mature. The X-Planes proved the concepts work. Boeing's St. Louis facility received major investments preparing for production. The infrastructure exists. The workforce is craned. China's timeline looks different. The J-36 flew for the first time in December 2024. But first flight to operational capability takes years. Expect 2030 at the earliest for initial operating capability. More likely the mid-2030s for meaningful numbers. The J-50 is even less mature. Some experts suggest China's three to four years ahead because their prototypes flew publicly first. But that analysis misses the classified American work since 2020. It ignores development maturity. The F-47 is closer to deployment despite fewer public appearances. The United States has been developing cutting-edge fighters for 80 years. The P-47 Thunderbolt of World War II, the F-86 Sabre of Korea, the F-15 and F-16 of the Cold War, the F-22 and F-35 of today, each generation built on lessons from the last. That institutional knowledge matters. America's aerospace industry knows how to develop advanced aircraft because they've done it repeatedly. They understand the challenges. They've solved similar problems before. China's aerospace sector is impressive. They've made remarkable progress in just 20 years, but they're still learning lessons America learned decades ago. Engine development, avionics integration, stealth materials, each represents years of work. China's catching up, but catching up isn't the same as pulling ahead. There's also the alliance factor. The United States doesn't develop these systems alone. Israel provides combat experience. The United Kingdom shares research. Australia contributes requirements. Japan offers technology. That network of partnerships creates a broader knowledge base than any single nation can match. Building one prototype is hard. Building 200 production aircraft is harder. The United States plans to acquire 185 F-47s. American industry knows how to manufacture advanced fighters at scale. Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman have been doing it for generations. They understand supply chain management. They've established quality control processes. China faces a steeper challenge. Scaling from prototype to production requires new facilities, trained workers, reliable suppliers, They've done it before with the J-20, but sixth-generation fighters are more complex, more demanding, more expensive. There's also the question of cost. The F-47 will be expensive. Estimates suggest over $300 million per aircraft, but America can afford it. The defense budget supports these programs. Congress approves the funding. China's defense spending has grown dramatically, but they're also building a navy modernizing their army, developing space capabilities. The J-36 competes with other priorities for limited resources. The race for sixth generation air dominance isn't over. China will field capable aircraft. They'll continue improving. Competition drives innovation on both sides, but the F-47 represents a significant American advantage. Superior stealth, longer range, proven technology, earlier deployment, integrated systems thinking, industrial capacity. All these factors combine to create a fighter that will dominate Pacific skies for decades. China's J-36 and J-50 are impressive achievements. They demonstrate serious aerospace capability, but competing isn't the same as surpassing. Not yet, maybe not ever. The United States Air Force has been defending American skies since 1947. 78 years of continuous operations, constant innovation, persistent excellence. That legacy continues with the F-47. The same dedication to air superiority, the same commitment to technological advantage. The next generation of air combat belongs to America, and that's exactly how it should be.
If this breakdown gave you a clearer picture of where fighter technology is heading, hit that like button and subscribe for more in-depth defense analysis. The future of warfare is being written right now and we'll be here breaking it down.